Hi everyone, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Uh, so this video we are going to talk about the cross-site scripting and some of the payloads which you, which can, you can use to bypass some of the basic filters. I'm not going to uh, like you know talk about the same which are already available on the OWASP or this HTML like you know uh, security cheat sheet website. Uh, the OWASP one you must have seen like you know OWASP one covers a lot of uh, different payloads and, and this was contributed by Arsenic which was uh, really great from him that uh, like you know he gave us this many payloads and which you can use to bypass uh, different filters and different uh, application controls uh, same goes for the html5 security cheat sheet here you can find a lot of different payloads which browser you can use these payloads on uh, you can do like you know cross site scripting sometimes you can also do do like uh, what do you call html injection but these are like you know pretty pretty good payloads to ha have it like you know when you're doing the penetration testing so i'm not going to repeat the ones which are which have already been discussed uh, but we are going to uh, talk about some new payloads uh, which you can use while you are trying to do pen testing and 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 like you know which will be very useful i'm also going to put it in the description so you can easily access those uh, some of those at least uh, and then you can use it in your uh, probably you can put it in your arsenal as well so please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and please subscribe to my channel let's get into it so today why are we talking about this uh, like you know access as uh, payloads or vectors and all of a sudden so what i've seen so far or lately is a lot of applications are using like blacklisting method and and blacklisting uh, obviously like you know we all know it's not a good way to prevent any attack not just the cross site scripting but any any particular attack and how it works is it matches the pattern uh, it has like you know certain well defined patterns it matches against like what's the customer input is or user input is and if it matches out then it detects or or blocks the malicious behavior so the accuracy of defending again the cross site scripting really depends on how good these patterns are or how good this blacklisting uh, blacklist uh, like you know blocks are and uh, second thing is uh, we are going to talk about the like you know some payloads but i want to start with like you know talk about the X script payload why because suppose you have been tasked to do a uh, pen testing and you want to find the cross site scripting in, in any application you would start with like you know script tag right that's very 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 basic so what we will see today is some of the variant of the script tag which you can use to detect if uh, if like you know cross site scripting is possible in this application and so that way uh, like because this is very common technique that every every pen tester uses uh, most of the filters and firewalls uses like you know patterns to block this particular filter so that's why we i want to talk about this one uh, which is not included either on the arsenic uh, website or or either on the html cheat sheet so the payloads that probably not many people are using nowadays um, so those are our like you know uh, that's the that's what the blacklist mode is called and and how the the blacklist pattern comparison etc works let me open up the uh, payload list so yes so here you can see these are like you know different payloads that you can use so for example this one uh, script alert uh, so here you can see we are we are using combination of like uppercase and lowercase uh sometimes that, that that becomes like you know the easiest way to bypass some of the patterns here we are not actually closing the script tag and that may confuse the the uh, filter as well and and allow us to execute our payload then uh, at times you should also try entering like you know some random string after the script uh and that way our, our goal is to write script in a way that it it cannot like you know pattern cannot detect because sometimes what happens is they strictly check opening and closing a script tag uh, that's why we are trying different variations to bypass that what you can do is you can also apply a new line you can start with this uh, you can go to the new line and then you can apply rest of the um, like you know the payload which will also sometimes works because uh, I think one of I think one of the regex video that we did in the past maybe if you haven't seen it just search for the regex bypass regular expression 
there was a one bypass that we found where uh, it wasn't it was only checking for the same line but if the payload is something in the new line then it will let like you know someone bypass that access control uh, here we are we are using like nested script so uh, script within script uh, this is also a good variant if you haven't tried it uh, you can also use like a null character right you can also try different encoding characters that we have seen in the one of the previous videos uh, which may look alike and which may also be helpful to bypass this so these are all the script based payloads which you can try or usually what i do is i put like you know whichever payloads that I, I like and sometimes i get success with i put together in a file i save it and whenever i'm running a pen test i load it up into the burp and then just fire it away and you never know which payload might work uh the other thing you might want to try is of course this one is very straightforward right ahref uh, javascript uh, dot alert you might have done this but you can also then try base 64 encoding uh, this this uh, have also worked for me in the past uh, you can also actually add not just a tag but also the form action tag and then like you know put put like this HTML little form and uh, I think similar payload is available on the HTML cheat sheet but it's not exactly like this then we can also use this one where it says form ID is equal to X and then close the form tag and then add button and within the action you can you can put like alert right so whenever the button is clicked it, it's going to call this javascript which is obviously going to render it and then there is also some swf so you can also try like an object uh, because html is highly rich so you can use like a different uh, uh, different tags to use that but yeah here you can also define in the data tab uh, the SWF file or, or GS file which may also get executed so so these are like uh, different uh, different ways or, or payloads that you can use I'm going to as I said like I'm going to link this in the description so probably if you if you want to use it uh, feel free to copy it from there if you have any other payloads which have been useful or have like you know you got success with uh, maybe you can also put it in the in the chat or in the comment uh, so that way we can have like you know growing database of all the payloads which are not obviously available on the OAS website um, if you have any other questions feel free to put it in the comment section as well uh, let me know what other uh, videos you guys are interested in so I can focus that way I'm also actually try I'm also thinking about like you know uh, doing some more demos on the API pen testing I know a lot of you are interested about it so let me know if you if you uh, if you like that uh, so I think yeah that's about it uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next Monday bye bye